Hey guys, how are we doing? It's Simon from BizLearn. Hi and welcome to a new video of my tutorial series NX3 Form Secrets. Today I want to show you how to create such a class A hood. Yes, I mean class A surface, which usually takes hours. And my target is not to create a perfect surface. My target is just to explain you what prerequisites we have to gain success. And therefore, I'm going to use blinds and just at the end a through curve and also additional analyzes functions. And you wonder maybe why I have a layout like this, which I'm going to show you. If you don't have an idea of how to import images like this, I've just downloaded those from the internet. You can find them via Google search. It's an Audi R8 picture. And if you don't have an idea, have on the upper right now, because I have made a video about this issue already and if you wonder about my layout i'm going to show you below the menu view it's a very very old function we have so if you don't have nx1899 as i do no problem you can use it i can find it in any version of nx i can imagine and it's called just open and standard is our single view which is this one and i've just used l2 side by side my screen is not that big and two views are satisfying for me. Question number one is where shall we start? Because I'm directly going to proceed by using the spline. But the question is, where do we start for hook creation? Well, I've decided to start with the hook because the hood has very, very much degrees of freedom as many, many, many surfaces within the vehicle don't have. One tip I can give you is not to start with detailed things. Always start with the biggest surfaces available. Just think about the hood and if you have a look at the front view, you can see there is a spike here, a kind of spike at the HAs and faces. Of course, it is a fillet on there, but anyway, we don't have to consider this neighbor. We also don't have to consider this adjacent face because there is a large gap in between. And if you have a look at the side view, there is some kind of continuity here, but it is all trimmed. So it's a little bit easier to create surfaces on the vehicle which are trimmed. But there's something else we have to consider. If you have a look at this line, which is a spiky, spiky, spiky adjacent face situation, you can see it is continuing here. And of course it has to be smooth. We need a smooth transition means curvature continuity. So we have to concern to this curve. And the question now is, shall we start with creation of that one for the hood creation or this one? And in my opinion, it's a little bit easier to start with this one and afterwards create a curvature constant transition. There are two options in the spline, through points and by poles. I guess if you have all the degrees of freedom as we do it now, because there's nothing existing already, you should always use by poles and single segment because by poles is much easier to drive much easier to adjust by just moving some poles around. And if you are moving points, which are aligning the spline, it's a little bit harder because the movement of your, of your mouse has a lot more impact than movement of a pole. By using poles, you also see the poly lines, which gives us a very good information about the inflection of the curve. And I'm just gonna increase my line a little bit here because we have a virtual intersection with this one. When, if it's not necessary, we could adjust it later on, however. I'm satisfied, but I'm just gonna enable my analysis and you can see there is a stronger curvature in that area than here. And I'm gonna have a look at my top view on this side of my window. And of course, I'm gonna move, just by using these arrows, all my poles to the right to match my template image. It don't have to be that accurate, don't have to be 100%. The more you interpolate while comparing to those images, the better results you will have in the end, I promise. And I'm gonna proceed with my studio spline through points. Let's try poles. One segment, that's our target. Let's select one pole, another one here, another one there. But we need a transition here, which is curvature constant. If I enable my comps, you can see there is an intersection between my 
needles. If you don't have an idea of what this is meaning, have a look at my videos which I've linked on the upper right. There are some explanations concerning the needle display. And well, you could do it manually and move it like that, but you won't be successful. So bipoles is not possible if we don't have degrees of freedom, if we have a, a transition which shall be curvature constant or tangent. So I'm going to use by points. I've created three points now and the degree is two. It's also three poles in this case. My target is to have only one segment. It is pretty easy when using by poles because we've got this single segment option, which we don't have here. So here we've got to calculate. What do we need for a transition? We need three poles within one polyline to gain this uh, curvature constant transition. So I'm going to delete this one first of all. But the problem is there is one prerequisite we have to fulfill. If I right click this point, it's infer G1 is possible. But G2 is not possible. Why? It's the degree. Because for G2, we need three poles only for one transition. It's three and one, meaning four. The problem is our degree is two. So we have to increase the degree. And if I right click now, it's G2 is possible. So we got one, two, three poles here and another one there, meaning four is one segment when using degree three. Perfect. If I add an another point like this, you can see degree is still three. This would mean we got one, two, and three, meaning five poles being used, minus three, meaning two segments, but it's not displayed. And segments always means we have a knot somewhere, but we can display here, show knot, and here is my knot. And I don't want knots because it's a quality issue. It has influence to our surface quality in the end. So I, this is something I'd like to avoid. So I'm just going to delete this point again and we have no additional knot, only one segment. What I'm going to do also, I'm just going to move this point approximately to this position where it is intersecting this virtual line. You can see it's not perfect yet. This needs some adjustment. But first of all, I'm going to have a look at this view. Also here, it's not perfect yet, as you can see. And here as well, maybe I'm just going to move it to my right a little bit. This one is better, but here we have to redefine, well, this curve or the other curve before, because what we are doing here when using curvature consistency, meaning G2 is just inheriting the curvature continuity of this curve, which affects, of course, a new curve. So we can redefine this one and by defining the curvature, defining a new angle to drive that one or what many, many people do, what I do not recommend you to do is they add another point and drag the point like this. Anyway, it's not brilliant. So I have to redefine this point, etc. But they gain another knot and they say, OK, let's increase degree and they do it again, create a new point. Just going to move it like this one. And here you can see the problem. As we have a knot in here, it's really, really hard to control the spline. But anyway, you can see there is a waviness inside the curve, which we don't want to have. So I'm going to delete my points. It is possible also within this spline to adjust your movements in the spline by using a right click on the point specify constraint. And I'm going to do it on this one because this one allows me to define a magnitude without adding additional points. And I'm just going to move it a little bit back and you can see it affects this side. It is perfect if the curve is well aligned to a plane, but not for this situation. So I'm going to undo my modification. And what I'm going to show you is how to define this curvature by editing this one. Therefore, I'm going to double click my spline. Well, the question is, what do we have to do? We have a large curvature in here just because of the angle. So I'm going to define a new angle for this curve by moving this pole a little bit to the right. Just a little bit and hit OK. And for comparison reason, I'm just going to undo this and you can see the comparison. And it does not affect this one. Not really. Just a little bit, maybe. And I'm going to do that again. 
just a little tiny bit to the right and i mean it's just really millimeters and you have micro position in here which you can use if it's absolutely just a minimal step and here you can see it's much better i'm gonna leave it as it is because as you can see it needs some kind of perfection it is possible with a low number of poles to do it but it needs some kind of perfection to really, really match. And that's not my target. It's not my target to 100% reproduce this vehicle. Even I'm not sure if these drawings are accurate enough. Okay, that's another point you have to consider. I would in this situation proceed with the rest and create a surface and then do my fine tuning on the curves, which will be necessary, of course. But I'm going to do it in a separate video because Otherwise, it would increase video time that much. And I want you now to practice this if you don't have experience and if you're interested in how to do that. You can find these images while search. A hood is something that every car has. So you could even decide to use a different car for this design. And of course, we will proceed in the next video with the creation of additional splines to gain a surface in the end. And I'm going to show you analysis tools, of course, to control the aesthetics of a surface and reflections, all these things. If you're interested in seeing more, subscribe this channel if you haven't yet. If you have questions concerning this video or older videos, use the comment function. I will be happy to answer. Hope to see you soon. Goodbye.